Are we getting back to normal or a new normal? Or perhaps more accurately, a brave new normal? And we've been asking this question, not just on Adam versus the man, but America, the world. We've all been like just coronavirus, shutdowns, lockdowns, social distancing, a government induced forced unemployment crisis. Do we come out of this? Telecommuting, protests, racial division, more polarization than ever before. Is this the new normal? What new normal are we getting back to? Are we going to have movie theaters, restaurants without bubbles over the tables? All of these questions we've been asking for quite some time now, and I think I'm finally ready to weigh in on what I think this brave new normal looks like. For starters, we go to CNN.com. This is from April 17th, Ray Sanchez, America's new normal will be anything but ordinary. As the United States combats the coronavirus pandemic, the timeline for reopening the country in a bid to jumpstart the economy remains unclear. But dramatic changes to daily life are coming into view from mass temperature checks and mandatory use of face masks to empty sports and entertainment venues to Orwellian government monitoring of cell phone location and other personal information. Now, on the surface, there are a lot of obvious new normals that the mainstream media is happy to point out because they would kind of lose their credibility if they just ignored this reality of the new normal, this new phase of, of government tyranny, oppression, exploitation. I mean, what's this all about? Like, why, why is this happening? The biggest rackets in the world are always around government, right? War, central banks, overblown health crises so that they can add nine plus whatever trillion dollars of liquidity to the market. Money poof, created out of thin air. And it's tempting to say, well, the more things change, the more things stay the same. So we go to finance.yahoo.com next. A bailout for defense contractors. Surprise, surprise. It's the <laughs> these pricks again. The Pentagon has announced that it is providing financial assistance to defense contractors who have been hurt by the coronavirus pandemic. Defense One reports. Oh, yeah. The Defense Department said this week that it has paid $135 million to five mid-tier defense companies as part of an effort to sustain defense critical workforce capabilities in body armor, aircraft manufacturing, and shipbuilding. The money reportedly will be used to retain skilled workers and in some cases to rehire those who have been laid off due to the slowdown in business. And you go, oh, who is it that has Congress buy the short and curlies all the time already? Anyway, oh yeah, the military industrial complex. Do you think, do you think Congress, do you think the federal government, do you think Trump even could have gotten away with with the coronaphobia pandemic, with the economic with manipulation if if they weren't getting their peace without their permission, essentially? No, no, of course not. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Government is still a racket for the rich to get richer and the poor to get poorer. And thinking about this today, just pondering this idea, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poor. If you look at the metrics of the fiat currency system, the runaway numbers, it, 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 it's tempting to go, oh, wow, we're getting, you know, screwed more than ever before. And they kind of want you to to have that power that, that over you by making you think that they're more like they don't mind if the conspiracy is government might be really way more scary and powerful and dangerous than you thought and how you really better not say anything about it you 
tinfoil hat wearing maniac, you know, stick to your bunker and keep your tinfoil hat on, right? Uh, don't forget the super male vit vitality pills. And this mentality that allows this to happen It is in all of us. What they are doing is sucking wealth away from the working class, right? From the working class to everybody who would exploit us. Government is not the only, but certainly the biggest and the focal central mechanism of the exploitation of the poor and working class by the rich. And it's not that all rich are good, and it's not that all poor are, are bad. Wait. I mean, it's not that all rich are bad. It's not that all poor are good, right? There are plenty of rich people. Uh, you know, very few in the, in the you know the the upper upper tiers don't at least have some complicity in the evil of the system. But there, you know, there are plenty of wealthy people who have earned their wealth legitimately, more or less, even though they're you know profiting from the the general system of the fiat currency and corporatism. They're you know, well intentioned and have, have more or less earned you know, what they have. And there are you know this isn't that, that all. Uh, Poor people are good. You know, there are plenty of bad, there are plenty of criminals and exploiters who just aren't successful, who are poor um, for, for whatever reason. And it's kind of a matter of what can they get us to believe? And I'm reminded of the quote from Voltaire, those who can get you to believe absurdities can get you to commit atrocities. So we go to the mirror uh, next for powerful image of archbishop and cathedral surrounded by pictures of COVID-19 victims. And I, I, I know this guy has not seen the headlines that I have seen. I, I, we brought you the story where they, it was, it was really clear in Washington state where the coroner had a guy who had been shot, died of gunshot wounds, but because he tested positive for corona, his death was listed as a coronavirus death. These are not people who are dying from corona. They're people who are dying with corona. There is a huge distinction. And the, the, the twist of that one word is, is such a, uh, it represents a lie of such massive implications that instead of the truth, we are, we are being led to believe that, that the, this is something we should... I mean, the mainstream is falling for this. A lot of people are falling for this. The majority of people, you know, they, they, at least they fall for it at first before, oh, crap. Then they put it together. And, it, you know, people like us, people like me, people who watch Adam versus the Man and independent media and read between the lines in the, in the, in the mainstream, you know, understand when we go through this correction a little faster, the mainstream falls for the manipulation. Maybe they correct it later. It's a matter of time, and there's a lot of this happening much slower than we want it to happen, you know, and I feel sorry for this. Archbishop of Lima, Carlos Castilla, has his cathedral filled with 5,000 images of those who have died as Peru continues to be ravaged by COVID-19, with the cleric also taking aim at the government in a live broadcast. And it's, it's interesting, the story says, Photos of those who have died during the pandemic, not necessarily from the virus. Uh, but then in the next paragraph, it says, faces of 5,000 people killed by the virus during Sunday Mass. And it's like, oh, uh, uh, please stop trusting the authorities, the people you know have lied historically over and over and over again. Now, what have they lied about? What have the records of, of, of history taught us about the racket of exploitation, that effort to suck wealth away from the poor and working class through these massive institutional social rackets, government or around government, you know, corporate rackets that are empowered by government, central banks empowered by governments, governments themselves, the military industrial complexes of the world well, it's always about war. What, what, are they, what are they lying us into? War. Well, you know what? I, I love referencing Professor Steven Pinker of Harvard, Better Angels of Our Nature, his book, The Surprising Decline in Violence, a TED Talk of his I highly recommend, showing that violence is on the decline in human history. 
undeniably academically proven. This is the course of human history. The racket of government, of war itself, is getting less vicious over time. So they're turning to different rackets now. But to the headlines, let's look first to uh, NBCNews.com. We'll go around the world for what's hot in today's conflicts. And, you know, we don't have to look just at today's news. Just think back over the last decade or so. Global conflict has been reduced in scale since the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. And I don't mean to ignore the Yemeni conflict or any of the other massive uh, causes of death by armed conflict throughout the world today. But the scale of what government is able to get away with in the age of the Internet, look at how long they've been trying to get a war going with Iran. Trump gets to kill one of their generals, certainly an international war crime. Did it escalate? Not really. In the past, without the check or checks and balances of the information age that we live in today, those conflicts very may well have escalated to levels that we haven't seen since uh, the last generation of international armed conflict. There's a scaling down. So to NBC News, we see the headline, North Korea bombed inter-Korean liaison office near border amid growing tensions. Uh, CJ, that video doesn't have any audio. If you would pull that up full screen, I'll read a little bit of this. North Korea admitted Tuesday to bombing an inter-Korean liaison office building just north of the border with South Korea as tensions escalate on the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's Unification Ministry which handles relations with North Korea, confirmed to NBC News that the liaison office in the North Korean border town of Kaesong was demolished by bombing on Tuesday afternoon local time. And this is, you know, I'll eat my words if this turns into a bigger war, but I highly doubt it. Let's go to the sun.com next. Trouble brewing. Chinese soldiers kill Indian troops in fighting along disputed border, raising fears of war between two nuclear powers. What are we talking about? Three. It's funny because I'm kind of I'm trying to like turn around. You know, the death the death of one uh, is is a tragedy to the death of a million is a statistic. Well, this is the death of three. Let's put that in statistical perspective compared to. World War I, World War II, all of the wars before and the cumulative effect on the death rate, you're being higher. The further you go back in history, the, high, the more likely you were to die at the hands of another human being. We are now living at the most peaceful time in human history. Go team people, you are less likely today to experience violence at the hands of another human being than ever before. You don't hear the mainstream media trying to get your attention with that kind of good news, right? Go team people, look at this. Look at how far we've come. You'll never hear them describe that as the new normal. Now, to the Wall Street Journal, one more international news story today caught my eye that might, might suggest there's a new normal in international affairs. There's a reason America's military industrial complex, which remember Eisenhower originally wanted to refer to as the military industrial congressional complex. There may be a, 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 why are they turning to the coronavirus as their excuse for bailouts? I mean, hey, you can pay us to make weapons. And by the way, there's, there's like this, like three-step progress here, right? You can pay us to make weapons to use in war. You can pay us to make weapons that you won't really use in war. Because that, that's really where we're at. Like compared to the scope of, of World War II, like they were, they were making weapons and using them up, bombs, they were going through them like crazy, right? Since then, it's like more Cold War status. The majority of military spending on weaponry goes to weapons 
that are made in decommission, not used in war, not used in the global war on terror. There's way more. Like you, you look at how much money is spent through the military industrial complex. It's it's to maintain this ridiculous arsenal. Most of it's not actually being used ever in combat. Now, the part that is used in combat, Iraq, Afghanistan, everything else, it's absolutely horrific. Syria, Yemen, everywhere that America's spreading hate and destruction. Uh, but there's, there's a shift that I think this next story uh, at least points to very well. From the Wall Street Journal, Japan halts introduction of U.S. missile defense system, Tokyo sites costs, technical issues with Lockheed Martin's Aegis Ashore batteries. Japan suspended plans to introduce a multi-billion dollar American missile defense system, citing major new costs and delays from modifications needed to ensure rocket debris from the system doesn't endanger local residents. <laughs> like, now when <laughs> read between the lines when did that ever stop the government from spending money on a weapon system <laughs> no no there's there's a there's a bigger story here and this was japan agreed to buy the system made by lockheed martin corporation in 2017 for an initial price tag of 2.1 billion dollars as concerns rose about the threat from North Korean missiles and President Trump called for allies such as Japan to buy more American defense hardware. See how this kind of fits together? <laughs> uh. So what this is pointing to is a kind of decline in global hegemony of the U.S. dollar empire, the military-industrial complex empire, all these layers of, of, of the swamp, if you will, that uh, Trump has only managed to feed, not drain. Now, to Thomson Reuters from uh, news.trust.org, a little more international news to take us back to what is the new normal? What is the new scare? Because there are more coming. And I have to think that the people behind this, and I don't think there's a singular global conspiracy behind the coronavirus pandemic. You know, there it is too much disparity between countries in how they're dealing with this. If there really was a global conspiracy, we'd have a bit more uniform of a response. But for the people generally behind this, I think a lot of them right now are going, oh, what? They fell for it? <laughs> Did you see the guy with the noodles, the pool noodles on his head at the Walmart? Oh, my gosh. Did you see there? There's a woman with a sponge on her face. Look at this. We've got people putting bubbles on their heads. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at what we were able to manipulate them into. Oh, and they're not even talking about the $9 trillion. There's, and now we've got them totally distracted with race riots. Oh, my gosh. This is hilarious. Oh, look at what we've done. Oh, my God. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is better than the war racket. We don't have to do war. Can we just... This is fun. I mean, the wars were so ugly. And, and yeah, they made us a lot of money. But, like, this is so much fun. We can still kill people off. Right? I mean, Bill Gates, he's still got this vaccine. Like, he's still working on that, right? Okay, the vaccine's coming. We're going to be able to kill a lot more. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But, look, oh, yeah, this is hilarious. Oh, it's so, oh, yes. Oh, this is so much better. And, you know, it really, it's safer for us. You know, we don't have to have the wars. You know, okay, so is this progress? I think so. Because really, maybe if, if, if I put myself in their shoes and that voice again, it could be like, ah, oh, shucks, we don't get to make the wars happen anymore. Well, at least we get to do this, and it's still pretty entertaining. We still get to rip everybody off. So, to the next headline, as coronavirus returns, Beijingers face disruption, anxiety. Beijing scrambled to contain a coronavirus outbreak just over a week after containment measures had been eased and life had returned to near normal. It was disrupting activity for many residents and feeling concerns of further tightening. Now, just 
for the historical perspective of the last few months on this story, remember China, it, it, the numbers manipulation is just obvious. I mean, they, 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 they released the chart where it had like the spike for one day. Oh, we counted them different. That day we decided to include the asymptomatic cases. The rest of we just way more to, And then we went back to not even counting them. And then they report zero n- new cases. And now they're trying to spin it as, well, this is this is a different virus. It's mutated. So it's come from, this is the American virus now, not the Wuhan virus. I guess, that, is that my Chinese version of a Trump voice? I wish I could, that's what I, I really need an impersonator to be able to do Ch- Trump's Chinese cousin, right? <laughs> but so what is this? If you're in China, the government tells you this. It's it's kind of hard to to question this. I mean, the, the information system there is is really locked down in a way that uh, in, in the rest of the world. I mean, if you don't live in a, and I don't think there's anything quite like the Great Firewall of China in the world today. If you don't live behind it, it's really hard to imagine what it's like to have that information suppression as part of your reality. It the, the Chinese government wouldn't be doing what they're doing in terms of manipulating and controlling the information if it didn't fundamentally work. Now, is it going to, is it the best thing for their country? No. Humanity? No. For the future? No. Are the Chinese people going to be able to overcome it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I have a feeling that if we don't do something really drastic in America to be the ones leading the world forward in freedom again, China's going to leapfrog us. There's kind of like a rubber band effect. Two steps forward, one step backward. Well, they're at the end of a major step backwards. You know, in a, in a way, the whole world is around modern bureaucratic governments and fiat currencies. They could, you know, they could have another great leap forward and end up being more free. They could overthrow the, the whole Communist Party, the whole system, have uh, a Chinese renaissance uh, where, where China comes. I mean, they're, they're, they're poised. They have the, 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 the people power. <laughs> If they really wanted to, to come to dominate the global economy, they they very well could. All, all they have to do is, you know, this, this is one little thing to overthrow the Chinese communist government that is pulling this crap. Measures have been strictest in the southwestern district of Fangtai, home to the sprawling Zinfati wholesale market, thought to be the origin of the latest outbreak that emerged late last week, which has infected 106 people. And, you know, right away you go, 106. And I, I kind of think of like Kyle Kinane's bit where he's doing the tour of London for Jack the Ripper. And at the end of it, the guy using his scariest British voice, or perhaps just his regular British voice, says, It may be believed that Jack the Ripper altogether killed up to five people. And Kyle goes, I know this is a strange time to well up with national pride, but we got people killing five people right now, baby. And we don't put out walking tours for all of them, neither. I've been rolling my ankles on cobblestones for hours for five people. And it's like, yeah, this really, it just shows how And I I don't mean to belittle the tragedy, but just that this works shows how little scale most people around the world have to even conceptualize tragedy. That's not hard. This is why the government has to control education. This is why if they taught civics, if they just taught civics, like, hey, guys, this is how the government works. Uh, These are your rights. And uh, at least on paper. And this is how you vote. And if you want to run for office, this is how it works. Because if they did that, they'd have to start talking about issues. And if they started talking about you know, real political issues, meaningful social issues of change, of justice, of human progress, well, then they'd have to start talking about these statistics. They'd have to start prioritizing uh, pl- pr- problems uh, would, it, would at least have to be put in scale, in perspective. They don't do that so that the Chinese communist government can go, well, we have a new outbreak of 106 cases, and therefore we're going to lock things down. 
Some gyms have closed and swimming pools across the city have only, which only reopened earlier this month, have been told to shut again. The same applies to places of worship. Uh, said Zhu Li, 44, who has been struggling to keep her Buddhist themed product store afloat during the outbreak. It only opened for three days, and indeed, there were some people. I had been happy for three days, then it shut down. The, yeah, and, and I, I mean, I, I could keep going on the story, but you know how the rest of it goes. It's the same thing as here in America. You know, it's it's worse in China, obviously, as, as you would expect with something like this. Forced temperature checks, mandatory social distancing, mask enforcement. And that's all really just kind of a smokescreen. So that you don't see how much more power they have to exploit and manipulate. Even in some of the stories we've covered of state and local government health officials putting themselves in a position to be uh, the, the ultimate conduits of bribery. Oh, oh, you you want your business to stay open? You, you want me to put it on the list of allowed? I'll put it up. You will, if you're nice, I'll put you on the list of exempt of essential. Be you're if you give me money, I think you're essential. Now, the title of this podcast and segment is Brave New Normal, combining Brave New World from Huxley's novel and the question on everybody's mind today is this the new normal so from enotes.com Huxley takes the title Brave New World from Shakespeare's The Tempest the title is that because John the Savage knows Shakespeare by heart and quotes him often when John says oh brave new world that has such people in it to describe the world's state he is being ironic he is not impressed with the shallow superficial lives people live he finds it tragic that the humans in this futuristic society know nothing of sacrifice, suffering, real religion, literature, the arts. He considers it a great loss that they have traded deep relationships for security. Mond, however, argues that the comforts and well-adjusted lives people have in the world state are a fair trade-off for giving up passion, art, and freedom. Huxley is being ironic when he titles his book Brave New World. He writes about this dystopia to warn people against allowing this kind of drugged, shallow, and dehumanizing world to develop. But we're not, are we? Are there no silver linings? Is the world experiencing nothing more than a descent into madness? Say it ain't so. I refuse to believe it. There are so many silver linings to what we're experiencing right now. But the big one that I would want to point out is the general content continuance of the trend of the viciousness of the general racket focused around the state de-escalating. You know, we could talk about the silver linings like we see from Forbes. The new normal isn't remote work. It's better. Desperate for stability. Our society keeps talking about the new normal, how our personal and professional lives will be permanently altered by the coronavirus pandemic and understandably work from home policies are a cornerstone of that conversation. Remote work was a critical enabler of business and economic continuity during the original shelter in place regulations and may continue to be for future emergencies, especially now that it's proven to be possible. So now our news feeds are inundated with reports and projections about where knowledge workers that were able to work remotely during lockdowns will be commuting to in the future, the cubicle or the kitchen table. So, you know, the article goes on and there's a lot more it's about virtual workplace accessibility, results-based tracking, and it concludes the new normal isn't necessarily a business world without working in an office. It's just a world where we focus on work instead of the office. As our teams adopt new ways of working via virtual workplaces, Asynchronous communication and results-based tracking will be able to focus much less on where we're working and instead celebrate the immense contributions 
that we're making to our companies and industries. And this is this is almost like the shallow economic version of the point I want to bring this story in to make here. That the well, I mean, there's so many bigger points around this, but we're not commuting as much. A major shift in just the efficiency of humanity as a whole. You know, geez, I got to quote Kyle Kinane again. This weird backwards race to see who's going to get to their crappier jobs sooner, right? Like that, really? This is this is progress. This is and and you know the idea of remoting or taking a, a big part of your life virtual isn't to suggest that that's what we should make our exclusive existence about, but that then the time that we get to be physically present is more meaningful and more valuable. And we get to spend it with people we love doing things that are important. Now, aside from the sort of all the economic shifts that are positives that come out of this, that make us even as the poor and working class of the world better able in our quality of lives to be able to, to live well despite things being sucked away from us. I, you know, all of the police reforms happening right now uh, th these are amazing positive things that reduce the viciousness of the state. So I turn now to Frederick Douglass for a quote, for a little perspective on this. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppose. Now, I've misquoted this several times, <laughs> and I think my misquote is a better version of this. Because this certainly describes perhaps an immediate situation uh, of a slave, right? That a slave beaten and abused to the end of their endurance will by collapse or revolt and rebellion hit the limit of the tyranny of the slave owner. Yeah. I like that there. But there's a problem with it now where it doesn't quite fit because our endurance, our ability to have value sucked out of us and to continue to thrive is increasing. With just this exponential curve of human progress of the value of an hour of human labor creating more goods and services of, and quality of life than, than ever before. So I'd like to think it's not the endurance, but the gullibility, something else. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the gullibility of those whom they oppose. Because their greed is also, while limitless, at some point, burdensome you can't be too rich so what's the bigger awareness here it's that we don't have to be a part of this anymore decentralization bitcoin currency about well, cryptocurrency blockchain technology but at a political level one of the things that I have done with our property here, the Garden of Freedom in Juniper Wood, Arizona, is start to assert our sovereignty. At first, just by lifestyle choice, by saying, I'm going to live off grid. I'm going to separate myself. I'm going to disassociate peacefully from the violent relationships in my life and replace them with peace and voluntary cooperative relationships and that's what i have and i've been so much happier as a result of this so now perhaps you see why i'm so excited about the capitol hill autonomous zone in seattle while there's so much to disagree with there and while much of that can be blamed on infiltrators and saboteurs there is still so much to be powerfully agreed with and to be celebrated 
in what they are doing in simply declaring their independence. To say these are violent relationships that we have had with the Seattle Police Department, with the government of the city of Seattle, the state of Washington, and the United States federal government, and for now, in protest, if nothing else, we are opting out to create the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. And according to thegatewaypundit.com, it's spreading. Antifa Black Lives Matter protesters set up illegal autonomous zone on plaza at Tennessee State Capitol. They took over the plaza in front of the Capitol building in Nashville, Tennessee on Sunday. The group proclaimed it an autonomous zone like the Chaz compound. It's a compound now in Seattle. About 50 protesters are camping out in the plaza in front of the Capitol building. The group renamed the plaza Ida B. Wells Plaza. So is this, this seems even less tenable. I'm, I'm in a sense, I'm not encouraged by the trend the Chaz occupying six city blocks. And there are plenty of issues with this. Are they taking over private property? Are they just reclaiming public government property? Is this righteous? Is it not? We're going to continue to explore those matters and get deeper into that today. But I am greatly encouraged, even with the degradation of the quality, perhaps, from... Seattle to Nashville. And again, like I said before, what is this? Is this going to be sustainable as an autonomous zone any more than any of the Occupy protests encampments were? Probably not. But it gets people thinking. It sets the stage and it makes me think of the greater issue here of rebellion and secession. And of course, you know, the Benjamin Franklin quote, if we don't hang separately, surely we will all hang together. But there's another little known quote from Thomas Jefferson praising rebellion, saying that it is essential, even if it is done wrong more often than right, that it must be celebrated to keep the spirit of resistance to tyranny alive. And clearly that's happening too. And I figured out several months ago that the worst they can do with this virus pandemic is bully us into a kind of bubble suit world, a hazmat suit world where you can't go out in public. Of course, that might mean, hey, there's a shift of private property, right? Restaurants being conducted at home without a license. More Airbnbs flourishing compared to hotels that are shut down. More communities simply declaring their independence, their sovereignty, their autonomy. Nothing could be more American than that. The new normal is a little weird. Things are fuzzy in a lot of ways. But if the new normal is this phase that we can go through, this brave new normal of viral threats, of manipulated protests, manufactured crises, but at the same time, a steadily growing undercurrent of rebellion, and of the American practice of secession. Sounds like the new normal could just be a transitionary phase to America being more America than it's ever been. And the new world that we are building is one in which these ideals that America was founded on, of of secession, of declaring your independence, of just proclaiming to the world, don't want to be a part of your forced collective anymore. Well, that's a new world that I think we can all look forward to, despite whatever new normal we have to endure in order to get there.